All right, we're recording. So thank you for joining us tonight as we go through club licensing uh, in Saskatchewan for 2020. Um, so the first thing that I would like to do is just acknowledge the following organizations for achieving the Canada Soccer Club Licensing Program Quality Soccer Provider, Astra Soccer Academy, Aurora Soccer Club, Eastside Youth Soccer, FC Regina, Hollandia Soccer Club, Kindersley Soccer, Lakewood Soccer Association, PESA, Queen City United Soccer Club, Saskatoon United Soccer Club, Saskatoon Youth Soccer Inc., and Yorkton United. So we're going to go over uh, four sections today, timelines for implementation, rewards and recognition, accessibility to competition, and support through club licensing. So first up is timelines for 2020. Um, based on feedback collected and also having operated the, the program for a year, uh, we've opened up our declaration of interest earlier than we did last year. And we will also be opening up the application um, in the near future. We're just working on some of the specifics behind the scene before we can um, release that to everyone. And once the, once the application opens, the deadline for submissions this year is gonna be August 31st rather than September 30th. That should give us more time to spend during the review and potential request for changes. Um, the two week window may have been a little bit tight. So now that we've moved it a month earlier, we will actually have a little bit of a longer period of time to go through the review and communication with organizations. As for the most part, there will always be small things that are gonna be a part of the action plan. Um, and that gives everyone a longer period of time to make changes. And then from that point, the request for changes would be uh, requested by October 16th. So six weeks after the deadline and or we will communicate to organizations by October 16th, sorry. And then resubmission organizations will have until November 21st um, to resubmit any requested information or changes. And then the recommendation will be provided to Canada Soccer. And from there, Canada Soccer will review as they did this year. And hopefully those that have applied will be successful in receiving their desired designation. For organizations that are wanting to go through the National Youth Club license, um, they need to apply through Canada Soccer. Um, so to view the Canada Soccer website and timelines as it pertains to the National Youth Club license. Um, however, it is important to know that even though you apply for the National Youth Club license, we still need you to apply to the um, your desired SSA overseen license, which is the quality soccer provider, PTSO1 or PTSO2. The information that's provided to Canada Soccer isn't shared with us. Um, and so as a result of that, a majority of, or almost all the information you provide them, you'll be able to submit to us as well for the, the desired license. In terms of rewards and recognition, um, we will be recognizing, and we have started to recognize uh, Canada Soccer license holders on the SSA website. Um, license holders will be awarded additional MAP grant funding and MOs pursuing license or different levels of licensing have the ability to request MAP grant funding through SPF. In addition to all of that, um, a communication would have been sent out uh, last week about member organizations accessing ASC Cloud, so Academy Sport Coach uh, Cloud platform. And there's a complimentary uh, one year subscription to the, to the software. Um, organizations that are successful in year two, um, if they're choosing to apply for something, will also get um, a second year um, after their next go through the, or go around through the application process. Um, the ASC Cloud Platform, we recorded a webinar with the director of the, of the company uh, yesterday, and we'll be posting that for everyone, which is sort of a, thorough walkthrough of what the, um, what the ASC Cloud Platform can provide to member organizations. And we believe it could be very beneficial for everyone, as well as um, we've also added in an academy or what they call their academy, which is 
I believe, 50 different session plans um, broken down by theme, which equates to about over 200 different types of session activities that organizations can use right away without having to create any of their own content. In terms of accessibility to competition, um, there is continued definition within our competitions in, Sask in Saskatchewan, and we have provided a competition designations chart in the past um, to explain the necessary level requirements to access those specific competitions. Um, we, I believe, first communicated that in November of 2018, and so we've tried to provide lengthy timelines to allow for member organizations to begin their planning to achieve those specific levels based on their organizational goals. So with regards to the grassroots stream, there is no license required um, to participate in grassroots or the community stream. However, for the competitive stream uh, for youth, it's a Canada Soccer PTSO1 or PTSO2. And for those in what's being termed the development stream, um, that's where the Canada Soccer National Youth Club license resides. Support for club licensing. Um, so this is a huge area of growth for us last year because as we started to go through the applications from the different organizations, um, we started to have a better understanding for where the different organizations were with regards to it or with regards to their applications. And then it gave us a chance to look forward to this intake where we have PTSO1 and PTSO2 um, as well as the quality soccer providers. So, Canada Soccer has the following guides, club governance, club management and operations, and safety. Um, and then there's accessibility and inclusion that are gonna be coming soon, as well as a guide to technical. Um, those are linked on our website and also the Canada Soccer website. Uh, the, the guides have been worked on by experts within, um, within nonprofit youth sport and that have an understanding of youth soccer, so please make the most of those guides. On the SSA website, we are actually in the final stages of putting together support guides for the quality soccer pro provider application, as well as PTSO1 and PTSO2 applications. In addition, on the SSA website, we have club development resources, which will be found on the member organization resources page or webpage. Um, that page is, if you go to member services and then go to member organization resources, we have a ton of resources that will be able to support organizations through the club licensing application. Um, in addition, we're continuing to work on a few uh, specific resources that we feel will help benefit organizations that are going through it. Um, and so we would say that if there is something that an organization is creating or developing and wants to get some guidance from us, we're more than happy to provide that as well. It doesn't need to be right before the, the application deadline. We would obviously prefer if the, the two or three days before it weren't just constant emails with a ton of questions. So if, there's, if there are guides or if there's policy or if there are documents that uh, organizations currently have, um, and they want to know if they're on the right track. We are, we're grateful to support early on because it will allow us more time to have those conversations and do a thorough look and check before we get to that um, sort of that time at the end where it becomes quite uh, frantic. So in addition to the different uh, resources that can be found on our website, um, we do have expertise within the SSA staff, so don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, there is a potential for community of practice. And so one of the things that uh, I think Canada Soccer is hoping to get from this is that a lot of organizations are going through the exact same thing. And so if organizations are willing to share with one another, it will allow for people to not have to reinvent the wheel, but build off of what someone else may already have. And also there are external experts that are familiar with our soccer system that organizations can try and um, utilize to support their application process. Some of the other supports that are, uh, that are provided, um, so through MAP grant, there is funding available for organizations 
to utilize towards their club licensing application. So new to SPF, which is special project funding in 2020, member organizations can apply up to $5,000 to support the pursuit of a license. Um, in, the, in the section that outlines this in the MAP grant section of our policies, uh, there is more information around some of the different ideas that uh, can be used um, for requesting of the funding um, for the licensing. Additional to the MAP grant, um, we also have workshops and webinars. So very recently, there's a communication earlier today that specified that um, all supporting events of our AGM weekend um, will be postponed. Um, so on this list, we have how to write a technical plan by Paul Varian um, scheduled for March 20th and how to manage your technical lead and or technical director um, by Paul Varian again on Sunday, March 22nd. Those will be rescheduled at another time. In addition to that, we have a webinar um, on newcomer engagement and inclusivity um, that will be on April 8th, uh, developing a walking soccer program um, by Matt Greenwood, who's an executive director at Pickering Soccer on April 21st. Um, we'll have another webinar on developing an annual plan um, by our coordinator of sport for all, Marcus Rankins, on May 27th. And then we'll also have a club management module online, which will be released um, probably in the next two months. And then we are going to also have um, a webinar on holistic club development um, that's going to be... Uh, the data is yet to be determined, but we're probably targeting at some point in May or June. So we do have a number of different ways that organizations can utilize um, the different types of support that we can provide. So whether it's through the resources developed by Canada Soccer on our website, resources that have been developed by SSA, um, the utilizing SSA staff that have specific expertise in places, um, utilizing the MAP grant, or attending our workshops and webinars, we have tried to do our best in terms of planning around uh, where organizations are moving towards and finding uh, workshops, webinars, or resources that can support them in getting there. So for the process of applying, the declaration of interest is open. Um, so organizations are welcome to start putting their desired level and contact information into the declaration of interest and submitting it. Uh, once the application is um, open, applicant, the process for application will be communicated in April and the submissions can begin. You, won't, you don't have to wait until August 31st, which is the application submission deadline to, sub, to submit your complete application. Um, organizations are more than welcome to uh, submit earlier if they would like to. We just won't have the capacity to review them until after August 31st. Um, however, don't leave things to the last minute. Um, it can be quite stressful if we do. So please feel free to reach out to us ahead of time. Feel free to get through the, the application process early. Um, and then just to specify again that for quality soccer providers, you will be applying and Saskatchewan Soccer oversees the application. Um, as does PTSO 1 and PTSO 2. For those interested in the National Youth Cup license, uh, you apply through Canada Soccer. So um, you have to go through Canada Soccer's timelines and process, uh, but you should still apply for one of the PTSO licenses uh, within SSA in case the National Youth, Youth Club license application through Canada Soccer is not approved. So if you have questions, we have Marcus, who's our coordinator of sport for all, he oversees the technical and sporting criteria. Uh, Lara Schrader, and um, who's filling in for Nicole, who's on mat leave right now, but will be coming back, um, is our coordinator of member services, and they oversee administration, financial, infrastructure, and governance. And then um, myself, Raheem, the director of soccer, um, I do all the liaising with Canada Soccer for the application. So with that, that takes care of our presentation. Any questions?
Darcy, any questions for us? Uh, no, I'm all good here. Okay. Um, we will be posting this webinar, but also presentation on the club licensing page. Um, but please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any more questions. And please make sure to take advantage of all of the different resources and support that we can provide. Perfect. With that, I am going to uh, stop recording. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us.